This is the fourth video in our adding and subtracting rational expressions. If we're going to add these rational expressions, we know we need a common denominator, and our rule has been if the two denominators have no common factors, then the common denominator is the product of the two denominators. Well, look at these denominators. These are a little more complicated than the denominators we've dealt with before. And how are we going to tell if they have a common factor? Well, we're going to have to factor these. So each of these denominators factors like this. This one is x minus 7 times x plus 4, and the second one, all we can do is take out a common factor of 2. Now look at these denominators. Do they have a common factor? Yes, they both have an x minus 7 in them. That means we can't use this rule. We have to look at something else. So the common denominator is not just the product of the two denominators. We must build the common denominator one factor at a time. And the way I do this is I start by taking all of the first denominator. No matter what the first denominator is, you're going to take all of it to be part of your common denominator. So there's our two factor denominators. Here's taking all of the first denominator. Then we're going to look at the other denominator factor by factor and decide what we need. We have a 2 over here. It needs to be part of the common denominator. We have an x minus 7 over here. Well, I already have x minus 7, so I'm good there. That means this, 2 times x minus 7 times x plus 4, is the common denominator. That's the denominator we're going to write down two times for each of these parts of the problem. And then we're going to do like we did before, take a look at what you have in the denominator, take a look at the new denominator, and decide what you need. I got an x minus 7, x plus 4. What's lacking over here is the number 2, so I'm going to multiply by 2. All I get in my new numerator is 10. Here, there's my 2, x minus 7. What's lacking is x plus 4. I do need to put that in parentheses because this is distributing the 7 through there, which gives me 7x plus 28. So there it is, a little neater. I have my common denominator. I have created my new numerators. All that's left is to add those like terms together. I have a 10 and a 28 I can add together. The top does not factor, so I'm finished. So starting this one from scratch, the first step on these, if the denominators are factorable, that needs to be your first step. x squared minus 9 is a difference of two squares. This is just your plain old trial and error old trinomial. And this is how they each factor out. x plus 3 times x minus 3. This is x plus 3 times x plus 2. As far as building your denominator, this whole first denominator needs to be part of your common denominator. Go to this denominator. It says x plus 3. Well, I already have x plus 3, so I'm good there. But I need this x plus 2. So my common denominator will have those three factors. x plus 3, x minus 3, and x plus 2. Take a look at your old denominator and decide what's lacking. There's x plus 3, there's x minus 3. What I don't have is an x plus 2. So I'm going to distribute this 3x times this, and we get 3x squared plus 6x. Over here, I have x plus 3, I have x plus 2. What I'm lacking is x minus 3. Distribute your 5 through there gives you 5x minus 15. A common mistake students often make is not to write this part down and try to do the multiplying in your head. It's so much better if you'll take the time to write this multiplying step down. We have our common denominator. We have created the new numerator. All that's left is to combine those like terms right there. And we have 3x squared plus 11x minus 15. Now there's always the possibility that this thing factors. Because this last sign is negative, I know one of these signs is positive and one of these is negative. I'm not going to go through the whole routine to try to factor this. I'm just going to look at the denominator in terms of if this factored, it would only do any good if it could cancel. Well, there's no way it's going to cancel out with an x plus 2, but it could cancel out with a 3 at the end. So I'll just put a 3 here. If I'm going to have a 3x squared in the front, I'd have to have an x here and a 3x there. No way could I have 3x here because that would imply I had a common factor in the problem and I didn't. 
So if this is the setup, my only hope here would be a 5. But if I check this, this is 9x, this is negative 5x, that does not give me 11x in the middle. It wouldn't help any if I changed the signs, I still wouldn't get 11x in the middle. So the bottom line is, even if this by some chance does factor, it's not going to cancel with this denominator, so don't waste your time doing the whole factoring. Now this one has got a little extra thing we got to worry about, and that is this minus in front here needs to be distributed through the top. So change this to plus, change that sign to minus, change that sign to plus. And on the same step, go ahead and factor this out. These are both just plain old trial and error trinomials, and this is how they factor. There is the distributed part of the numerator. Build your common denominator, take all of the first denominator, then take a look at each factor over here. This has x plus 4. Well, I already have an x plus 4, so that's covered. x plus 1 is not yet part of the common denominator. It needs to be. So those three factors are my common denominator. Once we have the common denominator, decide what you need. I have x plus 4. I have x minus 1. What's lacking is x plus 1. So let's distribute this gives us 2x squared plus 2x. Over here, there's an x plus 4, there's an x plus 1. What's lacking is an x minus 1. Now this is binomial times binomial. We're going to need to foil this out. Negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x times negative 1 is positive x. 4 times x is positive 4x. And 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Put your like terms together so this numerator will be negative x squared plus 5x minus 4. So all this left is to combine your like terms. You have these x squared terms you can combine. You have x terms you can combine. So 2x squared minus x squared is x squared. 2x plus 5x is 7x and then minus 4. And this does not factor at all, so we are finished. So here's your steps for adding and subtracting rational expressions. Factor each denominator if possible. Do not factor the numerator on this step. That is a common mistake. Do not factor the numerator right in the beginning. Then you need to find your least common denominator. Create your new numerator by multiplying by the missing factor from each denominator. Then combine your like terms, because remember what you're trying to do. You are trying to add or subtract. That's the point at which you would like to combine the like terms. Now factor the numerator if possible. We saw a whole bunch of examples in these four videos where the numerator did not factor. That happens. If it did factor, then cancel if possible. So sometimes it might actually factor but not cancel anyway, so it wouldn't do you any good. So those are your steps for adding and subtracting rational expressions. Sometimes you don't have to do this factoring part because the denominators do not factor. If they don't, then go ahead to get your LCD.